Now, I've had this Cartier Santos midsize for a couple of months now. Enough time to really get under its skin and assess it for fit, function and, of course, how it fits in with the rest of my collection. Now, in this video, I'll show you why you need to give the Cartier Santos some serious thought. Cartier has spent some quality time thinking about the customer and user experience, not just at telling the time elegantly, but real value engineered into the watch using exquisite design that you'd expect from the jeweler of kings, the king of jewelers. In fact, Cartier puts its competition to shame, showing what can be achieved if the desire to satisfy is there. But does all that make a great watch? Let's find out. I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. This channel is about me and my watch collecting journey, an amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, helping like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now, if you like this video, why not hit the like button and while you're down there, why not subscribe? This really helps the channel grow and reach the wider audience and fellow enthusiasts. Now for the handful of enthusiasts that didn't know, the Cartier Santos dates back to 1904 and was developed by Louis Cartier for his friend and aviator Alberto Santos Dumont and is heralded as the first modern wristwatch and pilot's watch. Now the Cartier Santos Dumont was available for general sale in 1911 and is still available and faithful to the original with that sort of classic art deco styling. What we have here is the Cartier Santos de Cartier in mid-size an update on the Santos de Mont released back in 1978. A time of the Royal Oak, the Patek Philippe Nautilus and a watch to keep Cartier out of trouble through the quartz crisis. Now the Santos grew true notoriety in solid gold on the wrist of Michael Douglas as Gordon Gecko in the film Wall Street. A real sign of affluence and power, maintaining Cartier's position as a true luxury brand. Roll forward to 2018 and the launch of the current model with the white dial. We're now joined by both green dial and this one in the blue dial. Now today's episode is sponsored by Chrono Hunter. Buying any luxury watch, especially if you're new to the hobby, can be quite a daunting process. That's where Chrono Hunter come in. Chrono Hunter provide an online luxury buying and selling experience that puts you in control. Using Chrono Hunter's one-of-a-kind portal, simply enter the details of the watch you're looking at, sit back and receive multiple offers from the exclusive network of the finest retailers and trusted dealers. Whether for a purchase or a sale, Chrono Hunter offers a quick turnaround and peerless service as demonstrated by their Trustpilot ratings. This is a safe and secure service with authenticity guaranteed, mainly thanks to concluding the sale or purchase directly with the chosen authorised dealer or retailer. Head over to chronohunter.com now and find the best deal on your dream watch. Now, back to the episode. It's fair to say the Santos is on the list of icons that many enthusiasts seek, along with the Rolex Submariner, the Omega Speedmaster and the Zenith El Primero. Now, many collectors will start here as it's a safe and yeah, satisfying way to get into watches. And as your knowledge and taste mature, maybe some of these icons will sort of move on or be added to, as I've done. Now, you can check out my previous video on the buying experience of this watch and its counterpart, the Ballon Bleu, that's now my wife owns. Now, both watches purchased at a great price and with an impeccable service from Pragnalls of Stratford-upon-Avon. In fact, thinking back, this is the first watch I've bought on site only without really knowing any of the specifications. Yet the water resistance, the power reserve and how anti-magnetic it is, I still don't know. And it's fair to say these were irrelevant you know, once my eyes were focused on the design and elegance of this watch and how well it wears. So now we've had time to marvel at the history and the beauty of this wonderful watch, let's check out some specs. Now this watch measures 35mm wide and 42mm lug to lug at under 9mm thick with a well-judged curved sapphire crystal and weighing in at about 102 grams, this watch sits perfectly on my wrist. 
35mm sounds pretty small for a modern gents watch until you measure the diagonal at 40mm. So on my 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist it wears almost perfect. And with the short integrated lug design the Santos has a very sort of elegant cohesion to it that some bracelet watches don't have where the bracelet and the watch head appear to have been designed independently. Cartier have perfectly micro-engineered both parts to perfection. The case is a mix of brushed and polished, adding exquisite design detail that sort of blends in and avoids the sort of monoblock design of many modern watches. And I really appreciate that. So many reviewers have also referred to the high polish on the bezel as a sort of a scratch magnet. Now it's not something I've noticed or really concerned about. The dial has a deep sunray blue with a light to dark gradient from the centre. Now, I like the contrast of the polished Roman numerals in the hands against that sort of blue dial, and having a little lumen over it on the hands gives it that slight sports watch edge over the white dial with its blued hands. Now, I did try the green dial, but preferred the blue, even though the green allegedly holds a little more value. But at this price, that shouldn't really be a consideration. Buy what you like, wear and enjoy. Now I do like the slightly industrial design aspect of the watch, sort of following those Art Deco cues from you know, the original Santos Dumont. The case style and the randomly positioned screw heads sort of hark back to a time of elegant engineering where if it looks good, it probably was. I also love the industrial look of the case back and how the engravings are made. They're purposeful and not overly designed. Where this watch differs from the Dumont is the addition of the crown guards, with a larger crown and what Cartier refers to as a spinel, a synthetic and faceted crystal that adds a flash of extravagance and matches the blue on the dial perfectly. This is an integrated bracelet watch with a difference. The bracelet itself tapers nicely from 18 to 16 millimeters with a short single links that conform well to the wrist. There's a twin trigger deployment class to add to the sports watch credentials and what Cartier refers to as the smart link adjustment. Now this allows the owner to quickly remove or add links without the need to visit the jeweler or damage the watch with tools. Now there is a small tool supplied in the box to push out the almost invisible button on the back of each removable link. But I'd avoid using this metal device, favoring a wooden cocktail stick to prevent scratching. Now with the blue dial watch, a blue alligator strap and polished deployment clasp are included. And I have to say, I think the watch looks amazing on both steel and leather. Another nice piece of sort of hidden engineering is the addition of the quick switch system for swapping between bracelet and strap. Now this is a proprietary system, unlike the one IWC uses that retains a standard spring bar. This one ties you into a Cartier strap, but does maintain the integrated aspect, which I like. Inside this watch uses Cartier's caliber 1847MC. This is an in-house caliber fitted to many other Cartier models and is a tiny little thing at 26mm in diameter. Now it has a power reserve of 42 hours, 32 joules and beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour. Now Cartier doesn't advertise these movements as chronometers or come with any cost certification. But that doesn't mean that Cartier hasn't regulated each watch accordingly. I mean, my example has run plus five seconds per day you know, when it's been worn for about two weeks, so I'd call that a win. Now if you want to go for a date, go for the large size. This one measures up another sort of five millimetres uh, at about 40 millimetres wide, but for me it just sits a little bit too big on the wrist. Now there's also a chronograph version which I'm no fan of, but if you like it, go for it. So. What do I love about this watch? Well, I love the elegant Art Deco design. And it's a bit of a crossover watch too. Not too sporty and not too dressy. A watch for the gentleman, you might say. The watch doesn't look like any other watch in my collection, so fits in quite nicely. It may be dainty with small, exceptionally engineered micro parts, but everything about the watch feels robust, tough even, as you'd expect from a swimmable sports watch. And despite my love of a date on a watch, I like the fact that you can just pick this one up, wind it and wear it, just as it is. It may be a, an early take on a sports watch with many sports watch features, but that square dial makes telling the time accurately a bit of a challenge. And this takes the pressure off syncing the time precisely, but that's not what this watch is about. It's all about the style. Hell, you can even choose not to set the time at all. Now, diving into the beautiful iconic red box, we get a strap tool, an accessory leather strap, 
and that polished deployment clasp. At £6,750, this is real added value, and at under £5,000 for my pre owned version, a real steal. Omega, take note. So, is it a keeper? It's fair to say this watch has many charms my other watches lack. Where large round sports watches, they start to blur into that sort of me too design. The Santos stands apart and sort of plays deep into the 120 year old heritage. This is a watch that's happy in its skin knows what it is and Cartier knows this and hasn't messed with the formula. This is an aspirational luxury brand, the jeweler of kings and the king of jewelers, that hasn't gone the way of Gucci. I'll certainly be holding on to this one for some time to come, that's for sure. Now, why not check out Chrono Hunter to find your perfect Cartier Santos? There's plenty of choice, new and pre-owned. I'd love to hear what models you have. Do you like the green dial over the blue? Or are you all about the classic white dial? Let me know in the comments section below. Now while you're down there, why not hit the like button? You made it this far. Please also check out any of my affiliate links or support the channel through the tip link. But for now, I'm Andy, this has been The English Watch. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.